Hey there, awesome artists. I was just looking at this postcard that I got and framed. I got this at the Contemporary Austin and they have these same words. It's an art installation outside their building by an artist named Jim Hodges. It says, with liberty and justice for all. Have you heard that before? Yeah, it's our pledge to the US flag that we say at school every day. Well, part of it at the very end. But what does it mean with liberty and justice for all? Well, let's break it down. Liberty has to do with freedom and justice has to do with fairness. So with freedom and fairness, but for who? What's the last one? For all. Who is that? You know, Martin Luther King Jr. fought for this right here. He fought for liberty and justice for all people. He was a civil rights leader and he fought for equal rights for people of all races. Now, not like the fighting that you do in your video games, his fighting was different. It was always peaceful and nonviolent. And his biggest weapon, his voice. And what he wanted you to know, and what I want you to know right now, is that your voice matters. And you can use your voice to speak up for yourself and to speak out against things that you know are not right. Today we're going to be doing an art lesson created by a teacher who lives in Brooklyn, New York. Her name is Ms. Haynes. And the reason she created this assignment was to remind her students and to remind you that your voice matters. So let's all say it right now. My voice matters. Let me hear it one more time. My voice matters. Awesome. Now I've been playing around with this with different hairstyles and different colors, but the focal point of our picture are those words my voice matters. We're going to be putting ourselves in this picture and we're gonna sing these words out loud and clear. I even created one with Martin Luther King Jr. saying, I have a dream. Have you heard of that speech before? It's his most famous. All right, let's get ready to create. Place your paper in landscape orientation. Remember, this is portrait, up and down, but side to side is landscape. And the reason we're gonna use landscape orientation is because we are going to use most of the paper for our focal point, which is our voice coming out of our mouth. All right, go ahead and grab something to draw with. I'm using Sharpie today, but use what you have on hand at home. And you're gonna start a little bit down from the top of the page, and then you're gonna end up just a little bit up from the bottom. So let's practice. We're gonna make a curved line for our face. Curved line. It's called an ellipse, curved line. Let's go ahead and draw it after you've practiced a couple times. There we go. All right, find your halfway point. I'm gonna move my paper over a little bit. Find your halfway point in this shape here and put your eyebrow about halfway in between that. So it's gonna be about a quarter of the way down. Now it's always a good idea to take a look in the mirror before you start a self-portrait. What do you look like? What do your eyes look like? What does your hair look like? You wanna pay attention to those details. Now your eyebrow, you can fill that in or you can leave it as a line, it's gonna be up to you. All right, just below your eyebrow, you're gonna draw your eye. Curved line over and a curved line down. Now you can make your eyes however you want, but I'm gonna show you how I do mine. I'm gonna fill the shape with two, uh, two curved lines for the eyeball, and I'm going to put a pupil in the center. I'm gonna do a small circle at the top for a reflection and a small circle at the bottom. I like to make lines radiating from the pupil to show my iris. 
But again, you can draw your eye the way you want. All right. So here's that halfway line. Typically, the halfway mark is our eye, but our halfway line is right here. Below the halfway mark, you're gonna put your nose. So we're gonna do a curved line for the side of your nose and then a curved line up for your nostril. And if you wanna add a line there, you can. I messed that up a little bit, but that's okay. I can tell it's a nose. All right, now for our mouth. But first, we're gonna draw our voice coming out of our mouth. I'm gonna take my lines from the edge of the paper and I'm gonna bring them all the way up and all the way across. Take one line and I'm gonna to go to the top of the page and I'm using a kind of wavy line. Let's make another, just start a little bit down and make it go all the way to the edge. Again, we're gonna do four lines and that's it. We just need three spaces here. One more line, take that all the way across. Awesome, that's gonna be our voice and we're gonna fill our words inside these lines here. All right, to make our mouth, our mouth is gonna be open, so we're gonna do a curved line at the top, go behind the voice, and a curved line at the bottom. You can tell my mouth is open and I'm shouting something out, or maybe I'm singing, I don't know. All right, now I am bald, so let's give me some hair. Take a look, what does your hair look like? Do you have short hair? Maybe you need to put your ear in first. Let's go ahead and find where my ear is. My ear is gonna go behind my voice there. Is your hair short? Is your hair curly? Is your hair long? If it's long, it's gonna come down here. Let's give myself a neck, I forgot that. Make a curved line on the side. All right, now I'm not just a bald head floating in space. So draw your hair in, whatever your hair looks like. My hair is pretty plain and straight and long, so I'm just gonna make some long lines there we go. All right, let's add those words. Now I'm gonna use our focal point today, which is my voice matters, but you can write whatever you want to write on your paper. Maybe you wanna put I am special or my, I matter, something like that. It's up to you. I'm gonna write my voice matters. I'm stretching my letters from the top of my line to the bottom, filling that space. It's gonna give more impact. I'm going to speed this up a bit, but make sure you take your time and do your best work on this part. And because I am making a very loud, bold statement, I'm gonna put an exclamation point at the end. All right, there you go. Now in your background, you might wanna add some shapes. Let's go ahead and do that now. Think about what you're going to use your voice for. Are you going to use your voice to communicate and share love and caring? You could put hearts. You could put stars in there like Ms. Haynes did on hers. You can you could put a peace sign. Maybe you're going to communicate peace. I'm gonna put a peace sign and a couple more hearts. And there we go. All right. All we need to do now is to color our artwork. Let's see, hmm. All right, I started off with oil pastels, kind of doing designs and lines. I uh, even went over my letters here. And then I went back in with my watercolor. I really like what I've done here. Now, if you don't have your watercolors yet, Maybe you want to use crayons. Let's see what that would look like. All right. So crayons can be fun because you can add lots of different textures, colors, do some different things. You can draw really dark with your crayons. You can go light. It's up to you.
I cannot wait to see what you create.